Hey community, we're back and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And together we are B and B, the community MPs. So today we're going to talk about um, well, this living is, with HIV. Yeah, so part two of our HIV yes. series. So I guess we'll start with how it's diagnosed. Okay. You want to tell them? So it's usually diagnosed through blood work. Mm-hmm. Um, usually you have to go to the lab, get blood drawn. Um, it can be diagnosed that way. Um, so the HIV test does not tell you if you have AIDS. Right. It does not tell you how long you have been infected. Mm-hmm. And it does not tell you how sick you might be. Right. So the CDC does recommend that everybody get tested at least once in their lifetime. Yes. So I noticed like on my labs, um, my patient like lab requests, mm-hmm. there is everybody have HIV testing. Like that's one of the quality measures. Oh, yeah. Testing yeah, by yeah. HIV. Yeah, so yeah, so everybody should get tested at least once, yeah. okay? And it's popping up on, like, even the adolescents. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. And if you're sexually active, you should get tested, especially if you have an unprotective sex. Yes. You should get tested. And also, if you um, inject, use um, IV, IV drugs. Yes. Yeah. IV use of drugs. Not like insulin, but no, like. No, like. Um, uh, what would you shoot up? I don't know. Heroin? heroin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, IV drug use, you should get tested also. Okay. And then, you know, um. The symptoms when you when you may have first contracted HIV will be usually are very mild, so yeah. that's why a lot of times people don't know. So you might have fever, yeah. sore throat, muscle pain, kind of like the flu. That's about to say yeah. those symptoms like are common symptoms. Yes, and so they're very overlooked. So you might go to the doctor like, oh, I think I got the flu or yes. something like it, and if you don't. You know, if you don't get tested for HIV, then you probably still wouldn't know because most of the time those yeah. those symptoms subside. But you may also notice like joint pain or enlarged lymph mm-hmm. nodes, yeah. and which I know Brandy taught me that like yes, you see enlarged lymph nodes, yeah, all that that should be like yes. a, a red flag. You know, I did ENT for like seven years at the VA, mm-hmm. and my um, collaborating physician, which is the person who taught me really how to be a nurse practitioner, yeah, that was the one thing she told me. She was like. Whenever you see lymph nodes, lymph node enlargement, person don't have any pain, she said you do think about cancer yeah. and you think about um, HIV. HIV. So she's like, yeah. anytime you see enlarged lymph nodes, just go ahead and test them for HIV. And I just started doing it on my patients. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I've seen enlarged lymph nodes and I've tested because of that advice and it comes back. I know Positive not sometimes. on everybody, but yeah. some of them could be like just reactive for infection. Cause right, yeah. Your lymph nodes come out when you have some type of infection mm-hmm. or some type of disease in the body. So that's mm-hmm. your body way of responding. Mm-hmm. So usually it go they go down within three months. Yeah. They may go down um, if it's like truly like an infection or like a cold or something like that. But if it stays, it could be. It could be. So, so anyways, just get it checked. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, who? What was your? What? what was your doctor's name? Doctor Fazika Smith. The late Dr. Fazika Smith. Oh, you, yeah. you got, definitely got to give her a shout yes, out. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, and then, so some of the advanced symptoms um, fever, mm-hmm. stomach pains, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, mm-hmm. weight loss, lung infections, brain infections, yeast infections in your mouth, yes. sores, or white plaques like thrush. Mm-hmm. Like adults really shouldn't have thrush. Sometimes you may have it if you're using different asthma pumps. Usually when you immune compro- your immune system is compromised, yes. uh-huh. you may have thrush, okay? okay? So you shouldn't have thrush. Or eye infections. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Brandon, let's talk about some of the opportunistic, <laughs> opportunistic. Inf- <laughs> infections. <laughs> yeah. So there is, there's PCP, which is a type of pneumonia yeah. that's typically seen in immunocompromised people, with, uh, especially like if you have HIV or AIDS. Yes. Um, KS with which is Kaposi sarcoma. Okay. You say Kaposi, I say Kaposi. Okay, oh, Kaposi. Which saying, one like, is it? It's Kaposi. Is it? <laughs> Kaposi, Kaposi. <laughs> um, which is a type of cancer that affects yes. the skin and and internal organs. Okay. And then wasting syndrome, yeah. which is just basically weight loss, involuntary weight loss, yeah. memory impairment, uh, tuberculosis, tuberculosis. Okay. And tuberculosis. And tuberculosis. <laughs> I can't get my words out tuberculosis okay <laughs> so how do you usually manage it um usually they have to get routine blood, blood work, work yeah. so they usually see an infectious disease um mm-hmm, doctor mm-hmm. which i know every time i've diagnosed um someone with hiv 
um, I sent them to infectious disease. Yes. And usually they just take over all their care. Yes. Primary care, yeah. everything. They just take over all the care. And here so, here in DFW, just a couple of resources in case y'all want to know. Yeah. There's PRISM Healthcare. And PRISM is great. Yes. Yes. They, they have really counselors. Are. Uh-huh. They have infectious disease. Mm-hmm. Like they have Everything. social workers. Yep. Like it's, yeah. They, have, they basically help you deal with all aspects of yes. HIV. Yes. Um, and then Parkland has also an HIV clinic. So if you know anybody that's looking okay. for help, there's some resources. So some of the routine blood work, um, they check the viral load. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also check the CD4 count. Yes. And which that the CD4 usually helps to fight the infection. So they want to see if their mm-hmm. count is low. And what's the viral load? The viral load? You tell them what's the viral load. That's basically how much... <laughs> <laughs> how much... Um, the virus is in your the blood. Yeah, how much the HIV is in your blood, to yeah. put it in simple terms. Yes, okay. And also there's art therapy. How you say that? Anti-retroviral <laughs> drugs. Okay? Why can't we talk today? I don't know. Oh, that's a lot how on much, our mind. That's how much we work this morning, <laughs> yeah. okay? Ooh, it was we, a rough we morning. We take that lunch, y'all. So that's how much we work this morning. Oh, my yes. gosh. So these are the masks that reduce the amount of HIV in the body. Yes. So so it's anti-retroviral drugs. Anti-retroviral. Retro. retro. <laughs> I said retinal. <laughs> Anti-retroviral <laughs> drugs. Yes. ARC. Arc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Brandon. So protecting your partner. Okay. You Basically, so you want to stay up to date on your viral load because if your viral load is low, then you're less likely to be able to spread it to someone else. And then um, you can encourage your partner to take PrEP. If you think they've, which we talked about what PrEP was in the in previous video. video. So y'all and, go back and watch the video. Yes. And then um, you can also discuss PEP with your partner. If, or, you know, you have sex with somebody and you think that you've exposed them, then they can take PEP, which is what you take after exposure. Okay. Yeah. So PrEP you take prior to exposure, which decreases their risk of developing HIV if mm-hmm. they have sex with you. But, you know, you should always wear a condom anyway. Yes. Yes. And, you know, recently I've, I've been seeing a lot of commercials about the prep and the pep. Mm-hmm. A lot of commercials on TV about that. The so, Scovy. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the most popular okay. one. Okay. So how to protect your baby. So I guess we're talking about transmission through uh, vaginal birth? Yeah. We're through about? vaginal birth okay. and through... Um, Breastfeeding. Okay. All right. So, of course, if you're infected, you want to take your medications as prescribed. Mm-hmm. You do want to do that, okay? You And they usually can't breastfeed, don't breastfeed. You usually do the formula milk instead right, of breastfeeding correct. your baby. Um, if at the birth, the doctor has recommended HIV meds for the baby, give them as prescribed. So, if somebody gives you medication to treat your HIV, please take the medicine as prescribed. Yes. And... Even, you know, sometimes they, they're giving the baby's medicine prophylactically. Yes. So give the baby the medicine. Yes. So, so that that's pretty much it okay. for HIV part two, living with HIV. HIV. But there's so many resources out yes. there to help. Um, and, you know, so many people are living pretty healthy yeah. lives yeah. With, with, with HIV. Yes. So it's manageable. So, it I mean, it is a big diagnosis, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, a you know a couple of patients who I mean they live in their best life. Yep. Yeah. So as long as you do what you're told, take yeah. your medicine as prescribed, go to your follow up appointments. Yes. You can live your best life too. Yes. So be. Mm-hmm. Are we finished? We are done, but you know, of course, you need to go ahead and throw that disclosure out there. So this information is just for educational purposes only. It's to be shared with family and friends. Mm-hmm. It does not replace you seeing your primary care provider. Period. It does not replace that, okay? So we want you guys to see your primary care, care, care provider. It can be us. It can B&B, be. B&B, the community and peace. Yes. Okay. We're launching our virtual platform. Yes. So I'm excited. Got some good news. Yes, so, yes, But sir. we'll give you more information on how to get appointments with us and let us be your primary care providers. Yes. So why do we do this? Because why? Community is, is our beauty. beauty. Have a great day, y'all.